Hello everybody, welcome to Kai's Rank. We're going to be starting a brand new Let's Play today as Egypt. So this is probably not going to be a super long series, um, mostly because after you defeat the Ottoman Empire, so I think you can also defeat um, like Ethiopia. After that, there's really not too much content uh, after that. We're probably not going to get involved in the World Creek, for example. So it's going to be a shorter series, and that works out really well uh, because as you probably know, or hopefully, the China update for Kai's Rank is supposed to be coming out sometime before the end of the year. So, short series right now are probably uh, what we want. But we're going to play as Egypt. Um, just because they're kind of one of those countries that I've never really even thought about playing. Um, until it's just like, who should I play today? It's like, oh, Egypt. I never, I've never really considered them as being a, a real candidate for playing. But I did notice they actually did a pretty... Uh, big focus tree, which is pretty nice. Uh, to begin with, you can't actually do any reformations. I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll get an event being like, hey, you can start reforming your country. And we're just going to have to wait for that. Get our basic techs. Um, we will use our 50 army navy experience. As well as some factories. So at 319. Civilian economies are kind of bad right now. So we're going to build one more military in Alexandria. One more in Cairo just to begin us off. You guys can go up to the north as well. Because there's not really going to be anybody down here. Abyssinia. We'll have to worry about them at some point. But probably not until after we defeat the Ottoman Empire. And we're not training any more troops. But that is okay. So the Ottomans right now. 22 to 52 divisions. We have 10. Uh, so as you can tell, we're kind of outnumbered. Which is not great. So the Sultanate of Egypt. The history of modern Egypt convention, uh, conventionally begins in 1882 when Egypt joined the British influence in the region, a situation that conflicted with the Egypt's de jure position as part of the Ottoman Empire. In 1914, a tax was made official and the title of head of state, which was changed from Pasha to uh, Kiev in 1867, was again changed to Sultan. This formally repudiated the vestige uh, suzerainty of the Ottoman Sultan in Constantinople, who backed the central powers in the Weltkrieg. Abbas II was deposed by the British and replaced by Sultan as his uncle, Hussein Kamal. Until his death in 1917, his only son, Prince Kamal al-Din Hussein, declined the secession, and Hussein, Kamal's brother, Ahmed Fouad, uh, ascended to the throne as Fouad I. With the ratification of the peace with honor, Egypt remained part of the now weakened British sphere. Uh, this was an increased anger within the Egyptian populace that exploded in violence in 1925 during the collapse of the British Empire. This being known as the Egyptian Revolution, where Father First proved his legitimacy by leading the people in the revolution. The revolution was largely nationalistic uh, in nature, uniting Egyptians from all social classes, faiths, and occupations together, but Egypt to foreign British influence once and for all. The revolution would also bring about Egypt's con constitution based on the German model. In the chaos of the revolution, the Germans seized the Suez Canal, which Egypt reluctantly accepted in order to avoid conflict with the German Empire. Since the revolution, there had been a conflict within, between the liberals that seek to go further and make the monarchy a constitutional monarchy, and the conservatives who wish to keep the status quo. Uh, moreover, in 1936 arrives, the Sultan's eye is growing increasingly upon the young Farak, the heir to the throne, whom is being groomed for the throne. Uh, with the decline of the Ottoman Empire, members of the all political parties begin to wonder and plan to restore the mighty Egypt and dream of an Ottoman free Middle East. I mean, that seems all pretty good. Um, I don't know when we get reformations. Um, Sultan Farouk has begun his reforms. Uh, as you can see, we are not led by Sultan Farouk. So I'm assuming Fouad I is going to die at some point. Just like uh, Kerensky was just killed right now. Fouad, I mean, he doesn't look very old. So I'm assuming he's going to get shot some point soon. Um, I'm sort of lacking in steel. What do we need right now? Probably a little bit of everything. I know, what are we not having templates for? Support equipment. That's okay. I'm just going to delete this so we can start building up artillery. Uh, then put support equipment on the bottom like this. That should be good. So the question of Egyptian identity. When the Egyptian Revolution of 1925 happened, questions started to emerge asking what it, what it meant to be Egyptian. When was Egypt great? For it was the first time in centuries that we were free and independent, and now we are asked to properly ask these questions. There's two concepts of what it meant to be Egyptian formed by looking back with romanticism through the radical different periods of Egyptian history. The first camp is known as the uh, Pharaonism. They looked to the pre-Islamic past, to the days of the pharaohs, 
Uh, for a time when Egypt was truly great and powerful, they argued that Egyptian that Egypt is a Mediterranean civilization and stressed the role of the Mediterranean Sea within Egyptian culture. So they did not neglect the Nile, largely it aligns with the liberal parties, uh, though strictly speaking it is not liberal. And while some Watani support it, it is by far the most influential form of identity in Egypt in 1936. The second cultural uh, movement is the Islamic movement that arose as the counter to the more mainstream federalism. They answer the question of to when was Egypt great by looking at the Fatimid Caliphate and the uh, Umayyad dynasty instead of the pharaohs, who they decry as pagan and absolute tyrants. They look back at a time when Egypt was the center of the Islamic world, when a multi-ethnic and, tol and tolerant Egypt was the most dominant Islamic power. These cultural movements uh, are more conservative counter to the more mainstream federalism and largely ties to conservative movements, uh, particularly the Ittihad party. It should be noted that both these camps support a multi-ethnic Egypt. Both Pharaohs and Islamists believe that Egypt will also always be an ethnic, uh, multi-ethnic state. Both uh, concepts are largely romantic nationalism in nature and have impact upon the culture and the art. We are all Egyptians. Like I'm surprised. I'm actually surprised just how small the Ottoman focus tree is. Like it's not actually a very big focus. It's pretty small, all things considered. Uh, we do probably need steel. We'll trade one of our factories away from steel with the United States. Um, Germany and France, they are closer. Also, I'm also going to lick my little focus tree a little bit more. So we got Hollywood on the Nile. We got the Black Monday reforms. When, when does that happen? Only when a blunt Black Monday actually begins. Now protection. Divide Ethiopia, gather African allies. Annexation of uh, Abyssinia. Side of Persia, side with the Arabs. And reclaim the Suez. Well, we'll worry about that, because I think that all happens after the Ottomans have already been defeated. First things first, we got to actually defeat the Ottomans, which is not necessarily an easy task. Um, Like, we know they are going to have, like, some sort of revolution uh, in here. The... What is it? What is it? Like, Mesopotamia, they kind of rise up. Uh, Arabia will eventually join us. Yemen will rise up in Persia. We're going to be fighting like a multi-front war with them. Tripolitania. They are a puppet state of the Ottoman Empire, but they do join with us, I believe. They also hire a new guy. Probably to someone who's like decryption. I think is generally pretty good. Like a power game, like a power game, research speed. Research speed and decryption. We want that guy in charge. Black Monday has happened, but has not hit Egypt quite yet. But it probably will soon. So we're going to immediately begin our Black Monday recovery. It's only going to take 46 days because we had a bunch of uh, points saved up. When will you guys actually have your uh, civil war? Probably at some point. I mean, who has, like, three divisions against three divisions? You're both more or less, like, pretty weak. And what I want is probably just, like, small, cheap units. Just to kind of pad our numbers a bit. Because ten... Uh, Jewish journalist has heard a newspaper supporting ideas of Egyptian nationalism. Okay, fantastic. One percent sport war support. Not gonna make or break anything, but it's still nice. But um, we, we just need more men. Ten divisions is not gonna be enough to cover uh, our shortfalls. Like overall, like we should outnumber the Ottomans on all fronts combined. Once everybody's actually involved in the war. But we'll, uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes. Afghanistan, they're actually look, looking like they're doing pretty okay against the... Against India. But we'll see how long that kind of lasts for. Don't see this control of Ecuador. Not a big concern of ours. So the Cairo Pact begins in like 1937, I believe. Uh, it is, yeah, May 1st, 1937. So it's not going to be that long. Only like a year from now. And Afghanistan, of course, has lost the war. Nobody's surprised by that. There's really just, like, a, a lot of shit happening. Um, test the Gulf, life cruiser tech. Unite the Arabs. I wonder how interesting playing as, like, one of these guys would be. I'm not too sure. 
I mean, they both got three divisions, so you basically just have to, like, rush to, uh, Rita? Or, uh, Rida? Probably something like that. Riyad? That's probably more correct. I don't really know. I don't speak Arabic. Uh, I know. Surprising. The reforms will begin to hit. And you're only after the reforms have begun. Is that the same with all of them? Yes. But I, I don't know when he's actually going to take uh, charge here. You're both 3% stability. Reopening the stock exchange, I think, is slightly less important. And Furak is not the Sultan. So we can basically not... This one's not as important. We want to just go for Black Monday is over. So we're going to go for Secure the Cotton Fields. Luckily, these are only like 50 day, 56 day focuses. Which is so much better than 70 day. You know, I would prefer, you know, 35. But, you know, I understand. Oh, no, these are 35 day focuses. Oh, beautiful. I was looking at these ones. These ones are 56. But these ones are being 35. Oh. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Finally got some more research speed, so let's just go for the next level here. Right now, we are considered apparently uh, an illiterate populace. 16.7% is a very odd number. Who... Is it this one? Why 16.7%? It's just a very strange number for it to be. Why, like, why not just like a flat 15 or even a 20? Why 16.7? Like, round to 17.5, even that's a better number. I'd rather, I'd rather take a bigger penalty if it's just a nice, a nice round number. We lose to stability. But we have now, uh, we've gotten a new Sultan. Say, so tragic news hit the Sultan. Sultan Fouad is dead. People are mourning. And now the throne goes to his young 16-year-old Fouad. I mean, he looks, he, he looks a little bit... I don't know if I want to say smug, necessarily, but he looks maybe a little bit full of himself. But we'll, we'll see how he uh, governs here. I don't know when he's going to begin his reforms, but... All he went on the Nile is 100 political power. Replace a great economy with a uh, developing economy. Okay, apparently I do need both of these. One civilian factory, though, I think that's... Better than 3% stability first, so we'll get that going, because it's going to slightly, I think, pay off more. Even though it's only going to be like 35 days, it's not a huge difference. I think it's going to be slightly better for us. So, Iran, I'm hoping... I mean, okay, so they're, they're definitely going to like do uh, a revolutionary uh, path. I mean, they, I think they'll declare one of the Ottoman anyways. I believe they all will going to liberate the holy cities. That's just attack and defense on core territory. Okay, you're not really doing anything super crazy like I thought you might. Freedoms is more stability. We're still social conservative, right? Yes, 35%. Uh, Dotani are currently in charge. Uh, next election is in October. Mostly he's been elected the chairman of TUC. I wonder if he's going to go... I mean, he can technically have the... No, he can't, because he needs to vote for officer for the Lawrence coup. But that's fine. Um, let's go for concentrated industry. 100% research bonus on that. And Russia's going to run the Soviet Union. So we got a... Did he go for Republic? I'm not too sure which uh, path Russia is currently taking, but we will see in the future. our troops just kind of attack over here into uh jerusalem i believe they're training right now but i can't really tell 100 percent and i know i've seen it before where the ottomans attempt to like navel invade alexandria of course we do not want that to happen under any circumstances we're about a thousand days short of infantry equipment not the best and right now, we really can't do anything else except for getting secure holdings. So let's get that going. Black Monday is 20%. Civilian economy is not great. We are taking a lot of penalties. 
It's not surprising. I mean, we are we are Egypt. Uh, greater economy is a 20% production efficiency cap and a 10% uh, deep buff to that. As well as a high grade of uh, consumer products. All of those are basically just words for it's bad in Egypt right now. If you want to start gearing this all up towards war. The Ottomans have about probably 150 planes. We have 25. Iran has zero. I have 17 boats though. I mean, that's something. I don't think I have any oil. Um, I have one oil in my country, so that's not uh, fantastic. Iran has a bunch of oil. I want to cooperate with Germany. Would you like to give me your oil, Iran? Not that I really need it right now, but I'll probably need it in the future. It's going to take us an entire year to get our reserves up to full. And I'm sure we would spend our entirety of our reserves in about, <laughs> like, an hour. How many men are here? We can't really tell. Apparently the screen bar says they think they're, they're very tough right now. Or no, we're very tough. They're kind of babies. Get some better weapons. We will need that going forward. Here are our holdings. Let's go for protecting industry. And we will go for after that. Probably just removing Black Monday. Black Monday being ended in like two months. Again, it's a little bit too fast. Um, for me, because you know, but the uh, the actual Great Depression lasted like an entire decade, and then Kaiser Reagan lasts for about two months. So Black Monday doesn't really matter too much. Well, okay, so you have joined the Reich's Pact. Wait, are you not the Totalist version? Okay, you know you are. Uh, you've gone independent. There's a chance that France will declare war on Germany over this. Uh, we will see what's going to happen. Again, not that anything that happens in Europe actually concerns us. It looks like the French have decided to do nothing. Which means I believe Germany is going to go to war with the Communal Republic in just a moment. Yes, they are. Led by uh, James Jonah Jameson over there. So we got about a year. A year until we can do the Cairo Pact. Port Idris. Three land forts in Cairo, which I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, it looks like this is what's going to give us the support of Tripletania. Do we have to go all the way down here to finish reforms before anything new unlocks? That actually might be the case. Absolute monarchy, constitutional monarchy. Probably not going to go absolutist, but we'll see. Oh, you need you do need, you do need all of them. Okay, never mind. Look at these. Okay, so this is the reforms, which I believe opens up the rest of this tree. Bureaucracy reform, judicial reform. I mean, it's all, they all finish very fast. Um, it's 1936. You know what? Probably get the better rifles. Not the 1918 rifles. Something a little bit better that we can hopefully actually fight against the Ottomans with. And we can deploy more troops. We'll just deploy them in Cairo. So right now... They have 21 to 55 divisions. That's a lot. I'm hoping we can kind of just like catch them out. Or that, the, okay, now it says 10 to 43. Hopefully it's on like the lower end. If, there, if they got like 15 divisions, that would be great. I'd be very happy if that was the outcome. We're gonna reopen the stock exchange. Of course, we're gonna immediately get rid of Black Monday modifiers. Which we have to do first, actually, and then we can do the reforms. So why have them side by side and not this just right underneath it? No idea. Maybe they're just trying to save up uh, some space here. That makes sense. And you guys have gone to war. And you're going to lose, I'm pretty sure, like, immediately. They're just going to take hail, and then that is going to be the end of you. Unless you can surround some troops on them. But we will, we will see.
I, I can't imagine Nezd is going to lose. They basically never do. Okay, so we're going to end Black Monday. I think it just goes straight up to partial mobilization. Like, our manpower right now is completely okay. 140,000 men. But it's fine. It's fine. Not a, not a big deal at all. Do you know what anybody else is doing? Anything too crazy? Not that I can really see. Finland has gone socialist. What everybody else is kind of doing... Okay, Ukraine is also going socialist as well. But they could also uh, purge the left later on, depending on how things are going. I'm hoping that the Ottomans also get involved in the war with Bulgaria. That would give us a lot of benefits as well. Basically, it's creating another front for them. We want as many fronts for the Ottoman Empire as possible. Georgia or Armenia, if you also want to get involved, I would not say no. I would love it if you would actually... Uh, just more fronts. Also, Nej, I want you to win your war a little bit faster so that we can... Uh, really like a united front. Because I feel like that's going to be important for what we're trying to do. And the more you fight back and forth, the weaker your army is going to be. Which is very bad. You have six to eight divisions against five to six. Also, I cannot see anything. All I see is... There we go. There's a massive... <laughs> it's a massive storm where I can't see anything. Okay, so in a 1936 general election... I don't know if it makes any difference whatsoever. Um, is it... Etat party... I mean... Sure, I, I don't know if it does anything. Except for maybe changing what the reforms are in the future. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll find out together. But I think it's going to be a good time to end our very first episode. So thanks everybody for watching. My name is Anthem. If you've enjoyed, run a thumbs up. Now, enjoy the thumbs down. Watch more, subscribe, and goodbye.